Um, okay, well, hi everyone. Thanks for coming to this uh, surprise talk, uh, which I just finished preparing. Um, I have some pretty fantastic news and to share with you, so I'm, I can promise that you won't be disappointed. Um, so um, most of you, you know me for the work I've been doing in free software around PTV and the foundation, and, but not many people know what I do on a daily basis. Um, mostly what I do is I do business and management consulting. Uh, I have that company like, called uh, Idemark in Montreal. And um, I do a lot of marketing and business development and uh, a bit of inter interaction design and um, various creative work. Um, so in a sense, I'm this weird animal uh, that can do mostly anything and everything. Um, which means that the business owners love me and HR kind of hates me because I don't really fit in a box. Um, but generally speaking, um, typically business owners call me when uh, marketing and customer experience looks like this. Um, so, yeah. Um, usually, uh, I, I've been doing that for a couple of years and usually my clients have nothing to do with free software, free and open source software at all. Um, it happens, but I mean, it's, it's the pleasant exception. So when I do get an interesting client whose uh, business is based around free software and like, well, free software, uh, I get pretty excited about it. Um, so, um, in the last few weeks, I was fortunate enough to be contacted by such a client and they are called Purism. And was like, what are purism? Anyway, and I thought, well, when I figured out who they were, I thought what they do is very relevant to GNOME um, and that it would interest you folks. And actually, they're one of the most interesting companies I've come across. And yet, I never heard of them before, um, which is exactly why they hired me to help them with the marketing, because it kind of sucks. Um, and I mean, to give you an idea of how unusual they are, they use GPG encryption all over the place when exchanging emails. You don't see that very often. Um, so what do they actually do? Um, well, they make personal computers in the forms of laptops and tablets and more to come. And those actually run GNOME, like a real GNOME, pure GNOME. So does, did anybody hear about them before today? Because I asked a couple of people, like there's one guy, two, okay, three. And pretty much everybody I asked during the past two or three days, nobody had heard of them. Um, well, I shit you not, this is the real deal. Like this is a GNOME 3 tablet available for sale. So, they currently have four models. They have a tablet, a convertible tablet, a 13-inch laptop, a 15-inch laptop. And as you can see, I mean, you can see the prices. Those things are not cheap for two reasons. First, because it's really hard to get economies of scale when you're just starting um, with small orders. And, that, and, and secondly, um, because it's not cheap crap, actually. And those are all, they are all premium quality hardware. They're all uh, aluminum chassis. They have IPS displays. Actually, they have, this model has a 4K display. So, high DPI. Um, and 4K is actually going to become their standard offering. So, um, and I mean, this stuff also has SSDs by default and USB 3, tons of RAM and all that stuff. So, it's it's high quality hardware, and also when you when someone buys one of these uh, devices, um, it's kind of an investment to help them make the case for free software, um, because that'll have help them gain leverage in supply chain, and well, as they gain leverage, they gain the ability to bring the prices down and reach more people, but also to make the case for manufacturers, well, suppliers, that you kind of need to be able to make a chip that is free software compliant. Um, 
And well, you know, eventually by doing that with proper marketing, you end up showing up on the radar of normal people, which is, you know, a, a really tremendous achievement for free software. Um, so one thing I kind of want to make clear here is that what makes them special is that they are not integrators. They don't just take a bare bone PC, test it and ship it. They actually source and build all the components, like they design their own motherboards. Um, and they select all those components to be freedom, like FSF style respecting um, and respecting of your security and privacy. So that's kind of interesting. A hardware manufacturer that's, that wants to do this, well, I, I'm not sure if you can actually read this, but that's their, like their freedom roadmap. Um, they want to be the first hardware manufacturer to provide a complete personal computer that passes the RYF, that means uh, respects your freedom, uh, certification from the FSF, which is a pretty huge deal because nobody has ever done that before. Well, not with brand new hardware. Um, so, well, that's an interesting goal. And um, they're also the first to provide features like uh, kill switches, not just for the Wi-Fi, but also for the webcam and the microphone. Um, so those are not software switches. When you switch off the webcam on those things, the power gets cut off. So that's a direct answer to the abuse we've seen with, uh, uh, with governments and spying ag agencies in the lights of uh, Snowden's revelations. So. Um, this is not this. This is very interesting because they, they not only do they run a free software platform, and it's all based on Debian and GNOME three. Um, they want to improve the whole security stack, and that's something that's well, that's fairly ambitious. Um, but that's also something that's interesting to us because um, those who were there in Strasbourg in Guadec two thousand fourteen, we had this push to go for improving security and safety and privacy in GNOME. Um, so I definitely feel that's something that we can work on. Um, and uh, I think, I don't know if Cosimo announced it yet, but we want to make a privacy-oriented Birds of a Feather session uh, this week. Right. Yeah. So you t should totally vote for Cosimo. I did. Um, so yeah. Um, and personally, this makes me very excited because for the very first time in my life, I will have an alter alternative to the ThinkPad that I used to run uh, GNU Linux and GNOME. And I've been waiting for years for a machine that can, that well, A, that is designed from bottom to top to be running the Linux kernel and something that is made with high quality components and robust enough to withstand the crazy amount of abuse I give to those things um, whenever I'm on the go or when I just trip over the wires because it happens often. Um, and uh, yeah, basically this summarizes my feelings about uh, the current situation. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not. I'm surely not the only one. How many of you had issues with your Wi-Fi or your graphics driver, or where the power management just breaks from one release to another, um, and then you wait six, uh, four to six months or more to wait for things to get back to normal? Um, I, I've just had this issue years after years, and that's with ThinkPads, like like the most well-known, well-supported hardware we have. So I'm kind of looking forward to having something that's really designed to run uh, Linux and all the all the GNU stack and everything. Um, let's talk about 4K. <laughs> 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 awesome. 4K and supply chain management. So, um, 
when they, these people, like at, at Purism, they were told by their um, screen suppliers that, hey, we're moving to 4K now, uh, so you could get for Samsung 4K panels for your new 15-inch uh, laptop. Um, and they said, oh, that's great. Um, here's some money, and let's do this. So they jumped on the opportunity, they prepaid the panels, they started redesigning and preparing the 15-inch model um, to actually fit those panels. Um, and uh, they offered that to their initial set of customers. And the customers were like, mm -hmm, yeah, 4K, I want that. Um, so most of the orders were upgraded to 4K. And this was very exciting. There was much rejoicing until the 4K panels were, went on back order. And then on back order again. And then on back order again. Um, and there was basically no alternative. So um, until LG entered the scene and then offered them uh, their own 4K screen. Um, so they, so they said like, yes, this is this is nice. Um, so they modified their chassis and the and the um, uh, the chassis and and everything to, to fit the new panel. And they had to fund the tooling and the assembly and all that. And they prepaid the new panels, but then they kind of had to wait for refunds on the old Samsung panels uh, because. Well, you don't have that much cash at the beginning. Um, and when they finally got the, 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 the new prototype approved, they, they started preparing for mass production. So they, they're currently going through that backlog, and they're hoping to ship the, everything uh, in October. So this leads to another interesting problem then. What if you're an old fart like Christian Hergert or someone, and you don't want to run GNOME in high DPI? Um, well, then that's all right. You're covered because then uh, they still have some 2K panels, and they need to phase them out. So they're phasing out the two 1080p screens and on the 15-inch model, and there's a promotion that they're announcing. Uh, well, it hasn't been announced yet, but shouldn't take that long where you can get the um, 10, uh, 1920 by 1080 p uh, 15 inch model with a huge discount because they just want the thing to move. Um, so you get like $340 off or something. Um, so it actually costs, for that's the, their high end model um, and it costs less than the, bono, the model below it. So um, it's really like a clearance sale. It's a one time thing and uh, there's like 50 of them in stock, so I suppose they will go fairly click it, uh, quickly. Um, and if anybody is, is interested by that sort of thing, I asked them if we could get some sort of coupon for the Guadec attendees, and I said, like, yeah, okay, we could have a, like a 5% uh, discount or something, so uh, I'll figure out something. Um, but basically, yeah, I'm really, really excited because we finally have a manufacturing that's taking a pure GNOME um, and shipping it onto laptops and tablets. And that's basically what we've been talking about for years. Um, so yeah, that was my kind of surprise talk. <laughs> Any questions and insults? And Yeah, you may have said this already, but what distribution do they use? Uh, Debian. Um, so one common uh, problem with some, some of the hardware shipping Linux has been that the drivers are not upstream. They're like very specific to that hardware. Is mm -hmm. this the case here too, or are they all in the kernel? So they have some kernel developers, and they are upstreaming as we speak. And or I, I don't know if the patch is landing on, on the, that sort of thing, but it's going to propagate outside of their, you know, they have their own uh, Debian-based OS with GNOME 3 called Pure OS, and that's where they, you know, do their downstream patches and everything, but they try to send everything upstream as soon as possible so, they, so you can run anything on that thing afterwards. Like, I, I know that in the beginning, the touchpad didn't work, which is kind of a bummer on the laptop, you know? <laughs> so the... Since they're a small manufacturer, what's the thing about on alternate keyboard layouts? Because you'd need to have a different kind of cut for the, the aluminum. Do they provide this? So um, there's a difference between the 
base keyboard layout and the keycaps. Um, I think there's mostly like two main layouts, the US and the UK, and they provide uh, the ability to choose one. Um, I think at the moment it still costs something to choose a layout that is not US. Um, and I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's going to be like same sort of pricing eventually. Um, but uh, I, I mean, this personally interests me because I'm a French Canadian Dvorak typist. It's a keyboard layout that only exists on GNU Linux. So, yeah. Um, question. So, uh, two questions. Where where are they based? Um, and the, the the factory, the uh, assembly line is in San Francisco, right. south of San Francisco. Um, but most of the people on the team are distributed all around the world, including some some one French Canadian crazy guy in Montreal. Right. And have uh, uh, have you been to hear about any like numbers? How many they have sold so far? Uh, I would say like ballpark scenario about uh well they've sold for a million dollars or so so that's if you average the prices you could guess it's about a thousand orders and, and they keep trickling in like uh, i think i've seen like 7k go by in the past few days right. um, um so yeah yeah so if you're in touch with them make sure they show up at water next time uh, yeah um yeah, I mean, I didn't know about them until two weeks ago. There you go. And yeah. I told them, hey, by the way, I'm going you to Guarec. Yeah, um, like, I mean, if they're a small shop, I'm, I'm less uh, concerned about trying to get them to sponsor or anything. But at least having them on the conference next year will be awesome. Yeah, I, I think also uh, uh, many of them currently are at DEF CON, uh, which kind of makes sense given that it's a, a laptop that is also uh, very much catering to people who are a little bit paranoid. So, yeah. Uh, I just want to mention, uh, if anyone's thinking of investing in the hardware, they did get a review from the Linux Action Show uh, some months ago that was not entirely positive, so it would be good to check that out before making any yeah, do your uh, thousand dollar decisions. They did point out, uh, they also did point out that the initial models that were shipping out had you know the, the Windows key. Well, it had no logo at all, and they were like, well, this, this is ridiculous. Why don't you put your logo on it or something like that? Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they were uh, the Linux section show folks. I think they made two reviews in different episodes um, of the 13-inch and 15-inch model. And uh, they were like, this is really exciting. There are some issues, and you should be aware of them. They, they were like jumping up and down in ex excitement. But yeah. Oh, um, there was also a review, I think, a couple of days ago on uh, the new screensavers show with uh, Leo Laporte. You can find that on YouTube and on the, new, the show's uh, website. I, so first, I want to say this is um, great news, I think, excitement news. Uh, but uh, also, I understand that this is, um, I assume, very Intel around centered on Intel based architecture. Would there be any plans or would there be any, so, any possibility to have uh, like an uh, ARM running on ARM device? Well, the tablets currently run on an ARM architecture mm -hmm. because, uh, well, that's kind of the kind of a standard and they are fanless. Um, but the laptops are all Intel based. There is the question then, if you want to go uh, deep into your paranoia, about the Intel ME chip thing, the management uh, oversight uh, Big Brother thing, um, which currently, I mean, it's not a problem in the sense that this chip um, requires three parts to work. It requires the chip itself, and it requires an Intel uh, network card and then it requires an internet connection and maybe some other thing um, which so you, you only get one part of the of the triple play so to speak um, but 
that's something, well, they made a petition, that sort of thing, and they want to be able to negotiate with Intel to not have that sort of chip. Because, you know, it's the, the, the kind of technology that uh, Intel developed because it actually makes sense in a business, you know, business fleet of laptops scenario where you want to manage your whole fleet. Um, but the idea, with their idea is to actually prove that there's a market for, for this and gain leverage and be able to negotiate with the chip makers and all that to not have those things. And they're also, um, you know, they, they want the thing to run without a, a traditional bias. They want the, the whole thing, thing to be free. Um, so, I mean, that's fairly ambitious, um, but also very exciting. Any more questions? There currently is a crowd supply campaign for an EOMA68 laptop, which is really, really low spec. It's an ARM laptop, but it's like a Raspberry Pi, more free and in a laptop case. So uh, the you are talking about, they are fast, I presume, like more high end. Yeah. The laptop, the the tablets are more powerful than that, and the laptops are ridiculously powerful. You know, we're talking i7 and 32 gigs of RAM or something, uh, not two gigabytes of RAM. So you could have Firefox and GIMP open at the same time. You know. <laughs> Any last questions? I don't think so. Well, thank you very much, Jay. Okay. Cool.